Hey everyone, this is Miss Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we're going to go through the comparison of analog and digital signals. Now, this is one of the subtopics of the IGCSE physics syllabus. Please bear in mind that this video will only cover a general overview of this topic. And of course, there's more to know about this particular concept. So if you'd like to know more, please feel free to do your own additional research. What we'll be covering in this video is just a general information that you would need to know in order to answer the questions in your examination. So now let's get right to the content of this video. What we'll be covering in this video is, uh, of course, we will uh, find out the differences between the digital and analog signal. We will understand that sound can be transmitted as a digital as well as an analog signal, and we will explain the benefits of digital signaling. Now, first things first, we need to be clear about what an analog signal is as well as, well as what a digital signal is. So here is a slide to show you the direct comparison between analog and digital signals. On the left hand side here, we have a simple graph to show you the visualization of what an analog signal would be like. So basically, an analog signal is a signal which varies continuously in terms of the frequency and also amplitude. Analog signals uh, tend to be continuous, and because they're continuous, they have an infinite range of values. Now, the values are more exact, but they can be more difficult to work with. Comparing that to digital signals. Now, digital signal, uh, it's a signal which consists of a series of pulses which are either on or off. So as you can see in the graph here, you can see it's like on, off, then on, off, then on, off. So you've got a toink, a toink, on, off, on, off, on, off. So because of this on-off nature, digital signals are discrete, the range of values are finite, and while they may not be as exact as analog signals, they're a lot easier to work with. As an, here's an example to understand better about analog and digital values. Here's um, the simplest example that could be used. In this case, we're going to look at the comparison of thermometers. On the left-hand side here, we have a picture of a liquid in glass thermometers. Liquid in glass thermometers are analog thermometers. They do have a continuous scale because it depends on the expansion of the liquid. Now, how we are able to read the thermometer value is based on the scale that we have built based on the expansion of the liquid inside the capillary tube. If we could somehow spot the tiniest change in the expansion of the liquid, then we would actually be able to get very exact values. For example, 19.29 degrees Celsius. If we could somehow zoom in and see, you know, and really observe the tiniest difference, we could even be more exact, right? If you could really zoom in, maybe you could even get a number like, you know, 19.2914, for example, if we could. Obviously, the limitation here is, you know, based on the human limitation, right? Digital thermometers, on the other hand, are different because they have been uh, processed in such a way to display numbers that can fit only in their display. So, for example, if the, the digital thermometer was only developed to show one decimal place, then it only showed at one, for example, 37.0 degrees Celsius, or maybe 37.1, 37.2. If you want it to show more decimal places, it cannot. If you want a thermometer that can show you more decimal places, then that thermometer must be set up. The display must be set up in such a way, it has to be calibrated in such a way that it can show you those two decimal places, but it cannot show you more. So that's the limitation of digital thermometers. So based on that understanding, this is why analog thermometers are, are far more accurate than digital thermometers. However, normally for digital thermometers, they're designed to be adequate for use in that particular application. For example, if you want to measure the thermometer, if you want to measure the temperature of a human body, you don't really need so many decimal places, right? Just one decimal place is fine. So whether it's 36.9, 37.3 degrees Celsius, more than enough. You don't really need to know, oh, is it 37.14? You don't need to have that many decimal places. You don't need that high accuracy. But if you have another situation where you need far more accuracy, for example, for um, the electronics uh, industry, then you have a thermometer designed for that particular purpose. So normally the digital thermometers have already been developed and designed to be suitable for that particular application. So more than enough. 
And the benefit here is that the readings are far easier to process electronically. Now, what it means here is that, say, for example, if we need to make use of this temperature for um, another purpose, so you could actually hook up the digital thermometer to a machine and the number can be sent electronically directly to the machine, which could take that temperature reading and process it for another use. For example, if you want it to, uh, you want the machine to be able to, to detect, okay, if the temperature is too hot, you can switch on the air conditioning immediately, automatically at a particular temperature, then it can do that because the machine is able to accept that number electronically, process it and trigger another circuit. Or if you need the temperature reading to be used for another mathematical function, then that uh, secondary machine could take that temperature reading and use that number electronically to be computed into that mathematical function. So that's the benefit of digital values. You can't do that when it comes to analog values because as you can see in this liquid in glass thermometer, like there's no number to be sent electronically in the first place. So that's the benefit of digital value over analog values. Now let's look at the comparison between analog and digital signals. For this particular topic, we'll be focusing on sound signals. Now, I know that many of you are probably too young to remember this, but way back then we had um, rotary phones, just like the one uh, on the left hand side here, the picture of the dial phone. So how we'd have to make calls back then, we pick up the receiver and then instead of pressing buttons, you actually have to rotate. <laughs> you have to return the number, let go, the number will rotate back, and then next number, and then next number. So those were analog phones back then. We don't have analog phones nowadays because everything is sent digitally, but um, it was pretty old fashioned. And uh, even if you see these kind of phones nowadays, they tend to be gimmicks rather than actual, you know, uh, working analog phones. Even the phone at the bottom there, um, although they have push keypads, they're actually still analog. Um, I think they're they're endearingly called dumb phones nowadays because uh, as opposed to the smartphones that we have, um, which is on the right hand side, those digital phones. Um, but back then, those those uh, those kind of um, phones were also pretty kind of cool. So those are analog phones on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have the digital phones. So instead of rotary phones now, we have digital phones where we press the keypad and the numbers are sent digitally. And of course. At the bottom, we have uh, smartphones. Everyone has a smartphone nowadays, right? So that's the difference between analog and digital. Let's look at how the signals are sent. So back when we first had, you know, uh, phone communications that were sent, um, where the signals were sent, you know, via analog signals. This were how this was how analog signals were sent. So if we were making a call and we're talking on the phone. So the person who's speaking will speak um, on the phone. The microphone on the, on the phone will pick up the sound signals that will be converted into electrical signals. So how this is converted is because sound has varying frequencies and amplitudes, the electrical signals are then matching those frequencies and amplitudes in order to be transmitted. So these Changing signals are analog signals, and these signal sorry these signals are sent through the copper wires over to the other the other end. So that phone then picks up the electrical signal, and using a speaker, it converts those electrical signals back to sound signals again based on the same frequencies and amplitudes. So the person who is listening on the other side can then hear the sound based on those changing frequencies and amplitudes. But Here's the problem. Usually the transmission of signals, although we want it to be perfect, they're usually not. Because along the way, there will be there will be noise picked up, electrical disruptions picked up. So although the analog signals are, you know, we've got the changing frequencies and amplitudes and they're, they're trying to maintain that purity along the way because of electrical disruptions. And remember, these are electrical signals that are being sent. If they pick up any electrical disruptions, that's going to be added on to the electrical signals. And what you'll find is that along the way, you'll find that okay, instead of having that pure, clear sound, it starts picking up noise in the form of that zzz. And when it gets to the other end, 
the listener is also going to hear not only those sound signals, but all the noise along the way. So if any of you have ever experienced hearing all those electrical disruptions, that's why when we hear that person, we're like, we can't hear like, huh, we can hear something being said, but we can't really hear clearly. And that's because there's a lot of noise that has been picked up along the way during transmission. So that's a problem with analog signals. Now let's take a look at digital signals. Similarly, the phone needs to convert the sound signals into electrical signals. The difference here is that when it comes to digital signals, because they're based on on, off, on, off. So it encodes the sound signals into electrical signals using pulses instead. And then these pulses are sent as digital signals, usually through optical fibers over to the other end. And what happens is the decoder would translate those pulses with the changing frequencies and amplitude back into sound signals. How come digital signals can be a lot uh, clearer and better than analog signals? It's because of the use of amplifiers and regenerators. So what happens is when the signals have been converted into digital pulses, as they're being transmitted, it is possible that these signals pick up some noise. As you can see, the middle there goes zzz zzz there. But because it's based on on, off, on, off, um, sometimes this on, off can be referred to as ones and zeros, on, off, one, zero, right? When we want to clean up the signal, we can use, uh, we, we, we have these devices known as amplifiers, regenerators. Amplifiers are just used to amplify the sound because if the sound, you know, has too small an amplitude, maybe it can't reach the other side clearly. So what happens is the amplifier will then maximize or not maximize uh will basically make the um signal value higher so that it okay it's easier and uh, what do you call it? it's it, it's um it's bigger in value so that it can reach the other side more clearly so how it works is because again digital signals are just on off on off so amplifiers just look for the on and it increases the amplitude for the on values okay on off on off Regenerators can clean up the signal. So because all the device is looking for is for on and off, what happens is that, okay, this is on, this is off, whatever noise along the way, it just you know clear it so that you can get, again, the clear, smooth sound. Sometimes you may come across repeaters. Uh, repeaters are basically uh, the device that can be used to amplify or regenerate the signals. And that's how digital signals are able to transmit the sound signals from one end to another end very clearly, in spite of the noise that's been picked up, it can clean up the noise so that on the other end, we still hear the sound as if it's from the original, like, oh, clear as, as, as light and there's if you're right in the room next to me, kind of thing, yeah? So that's uh, why digital signals are clearer. Based on this, okay, the advantage of digital signals based on our understanding now, we can see that digital signals can transmit data much more rapidly and more accurately than analog signals. And due to the accurate signal regeneration, that means the cleaning up of all the um, signals and the data, clearing up all the noise, now we understand, okay, that's, this is how digital signals can be transmitted at a higher rate and at a much greater range. So that means you can transmit it more quickly and at a further distance because in spite of whatever noise has picked up, it can clear the noise, it can amplify the sound, can even repeat the, the, the signals so that it can reach more quickly and at a further distance compared to analog signals. And the good thing about digital signals also is that they can communicate directly with computers which use digital data. Just like I mentioned earlier, the machines can just pick up the digital values directly from the, um, from the measuring instrument and make use of that that data straight away to process into more complex mathematical functions or even more complex circuits. And there we go. And that's the end of this video. So we hope you found this video educational and helpful. Don't forget to click like and remember to subscribe so that you can get access to more videos just like these, which give you a general overview of the topic or a quick understanding for your examinations. Happy studying.